In 2003, new scientists took part in a water walking competition in Edinburgh. We had to create a pair of floating shoes that could make a 40 meter journey in a swimming pool. There was a budget of $80 for the materials. Oh, it's a very simple design, just your float stand on the bottom so you've got good balance and flaps at the underneath, but uh, I think we're clearly outclassed by some of the other designs. 21 teams competed in the sprint. It's a new scientist team, and the pilot is Michael. Although it was a close race, we didn't win. Perhaps new scientists should have taken inspiration from nature. Water striders, for example, seem to effortlessly skim across ponds. If you're small enough, light enough, and have a, a big enough perimeter, then you can uh, oppose your own body weight by pushing down on this surface tension and keep yourself up. Unfortunately, humans are too large to use the surface tension trick. But larger animals have found ways to exploit water's buoyancy. As you get bigger, um, what, you, what you have to start doing if you're, if you're denser than the water, is you're having to slap and, and throw something down. And, and things like basilisk lizards go about foot slapping on the water. When a foot hits the water, a tiny water cavity is formed, which adds buoyancy. If lizards move fast enough, they can move on before the cavity collapses. But it doesn't work quite so well if you're much larger than a lizard. That works fine for a particular size scale. But as you get bigger and bigger, all the timing goes wrong and, and trouble starts. So really the only way that something the size of me could possibly walk on water is to use Archimedes' displacement. We've got to displace some water. Uh, and at that stage, secretly, you're just being like a boring old boat. So could we have made our shoe design more interesting? Usherwood thinks we should have taken inspiration from birds called storm petrels. They're not exactly walking on water, they're effectively flying with their feet dangling in the water. And this is the nearest thing I know in biology to kites. So if you could have a great big kite and boat-like shoes, some combination of that would be good fun.